What's up, people? First of all, did you guys watch Peter Obi's performance at the Chatham House? It's your girl, Adiola, and of course, I'm here to catch you up on the latest with African news. Today, we'll be talking about Nigeria, we'll be talking about Cameroon. But first and foremost, my Nigerian people, please move closer. If you have not picked up your PVC, that is what you need to vote. The deadline is January 29th. January what? 29th. Without that, you cannot vote. So please, don't just talk on the internet. Go and do what? Pick up your PVC. Real quick, guys, if you live in the US, I'm excited to tell you that Nigerian movies are starting to play at our movie theaters, as in Regal Movie Theater to be precise. It's now showing two Nigerian movies, Battle on Buka Street and Ijakuma. So if you live in Chicago, Atlanta, New York, New Jersey, LA, Dallas, Houston, check out the Regal Theater's website to know when a Nigerian movie might be showing near where you live. I think that's a breakthrough for Nollywood and I'm so proud of them. So, Nigerian presidential candidate Peter Obi also went to Chatham House just like Tinubu did and I think he did really well in answering questions. It becomes a problem when you are pursuing transactional policies which will benefit you or you are engaging in nepotism where you have to. But if you address it by strictly following the constitution which spells out that the system is characterized by simply that we have diversity and all is included and you did the right things. You don't need to worry about that. People asked him about insecurity, the central bank governor, whether or not he will fire the man, uh, foreign debt, assurance for foreign investors, generating stable electricity, and what will happen to those big boys making money by selling power generators in Nigeria. And I think he did really well in answering those questions. He talked about the big, what, what you're saying is about the big boys who are selling generators. <laughs> Let me assure you, let me assure you what we've been campaigning on. Our campaign, you have heard them say we don't have structures. That is the structure we're trying to destroy. Structure of criminality. That is what I mentioned. That Nigeria is being held captive. That structure is structure that impoverished Nigeria. We will dismantle it. Wow. I particularly love how he answered the question on IPOB. He said that he would dialogue with everyone that is agitating because there is a reason why people are agitating. You don't just dismiss people. I spoke about Biafra being ended 53 years ago. I condemn all agitators, but in condemning them, you have to look at what brought about this agitation is all over the place. It's not only IPOB. He even said people are agitating in his house. When people start seeing justice, fairness, and inclusive government and doing the right thing, yeah. all those things will start reversing itself. Yeah. And that is what me and that is offering. I will talk and discuss with all agitators. There's nothing wrong in that. People agitate even in my house, and I talk with them. In fact, people were clapping for him as he was answering the questions, and not once did he delegate somebody else to answer his questions. Hey man, somebody, we are not talking about anybody, we are just saying. And then the man was on his feet the entire one and a half hours. And so I really think it's safe to say that this is one of those town hall meetings that is truly different from Bala Blue. Bulaba. And I'm not poking fun at Aswaji Bala and Metinubu, my father, in case you are watching, who am I? I can never. But. <laughs> No, but for you, this is different. It's, I'm just trying to use a language that you guys already understand. <laughs> However, I wish that his speech was also engaging. I mean, it is very important to keep eye contact when you're addressing people. It's okay for you to write down your speech, but please, practice as many times as you need to so that all you would need would be a little note to remember what next to say. Instead of reading the entire speech, it gets boring when you are looking at 90% of the time and you are addressing people. Hapa e beru alone now, so Mr. Peter will be, don't be doing that if you become president, just reading to the people. We want you to engage us with your words and your eyes, you know? Odilorowa. <laughs> More importantly, I still don't understand why our candidates have to go to Europe to address us and take questions every time election is here. When did you see somebody that is trying to be a UK Prime Minister come to Nigeria to take questions? No, seriously, I'm just, it's not done. We said that we are an independent country. 
So why is it that every election we still have to go and present ourselves at Chatham House in the UK? I don't understand this. Meanwhile, some of these same candidates, they don't agree to debate in their own country, Nigeria. All those questions that they were asking them should be asked in a debate. We should have a series of debates with all the popular candidates right in our own country. But again, what do I know? I know people will say I don't know anything. But real quick, guys, please move closer. It looks like the president of Cameroon, Paul Bia, is suffering from memory loss. The man was at the US-Africa summit last month and he had no idea where he was or why he was there. I think he has dementia and it happens to the best of us. Nobody is making fun of him. He will be 90 next month. He has lived a long life. Nobody is making fun of his health challenges. But those who surround the man clearly don't have the fear of God. I don't think they really care about the man. Otherwise, he would have stepped down a long time ago. The whole world doesn't need to see him being embarrassed. He's embarrassing himself and Cameroon. On a world platform, it shouldn't be. Pourquoi je suis en vedette? C'est qui tous ces gens qui sont là? Pourquoi j'ai pas demandé ça? Est-ce qu'il y a des, des gens importants là? Je dois parler maintenant. Je vous parler ici. Oui. Pourquoi? I mean it's so sad. The man just sat there, he farted. He kept looking at the pamphlet in his hand for minutes. That is supposed to be his speech. Then he farted again in public. He put out his pamphlet. His aide came back to prompt him to speak. This man has a wife. Chantel Bia, the woman with the biggest hair, always with the biggest wig. 52 year old Chantel Bia. What were you looking at? You would think that the bigger the wig, the more brain somebody would have. You would think this woman would have the fear of God. Hey, better alone. This woman is just using this man. And what happened to his children? We have talked about his children in the past. Is there not one of you that has the fear of God? You see your father like this. You cannot do family meeting. Okay, for you, for you, yeah. Until that, this is not right. You keep putting him out like that. Habba, he be rolona. What is so hard in the man stepping down? He clearly has no idea that he's president. It is the people around him that need to say enough is enough and ensure that he steps down. Did they not celebrate 40 years in power recently? No wonder he didn't show up to his own party. Is 40 years not enough? How can there not be one family member that would think they need to put an end to this public embarrassment? What is it with us in Africa? This man has no clue that he's a president. Those around him are just taking advantage of that to steal money. Why else would they keep him in power? The same thing is happening in Gabon right now. Remember that their president had stroke and the man has not been well since then. He can barely walk, yet he's not stepping down. In fact, he put his son in charge of the country. Who does that? Hey, Cameroonians. This one, my Cameroonian people, this one passed me. Those surrounding your president are wicked people. They don't want the man to step down. We are praying for you, Olodio Keyan. Let me know what you guys think about what happened to the president of Cameroon at the US Africa summit. Meanwhile, I just want you guys to, you know, take one minute and talk to me about this whole US Africa summit thing. I, I think it's great. But I also think it's sad when you look at it in a different way that the only time these African leaders will gather is when America says, come. <laughs> I'm sorry to say. The U.S. will always protect its own interests. 
I live in the U.S. I have nothing against the U.S. But when will Africa also start protecting its own interests? Can any African leader say that Western presidents should gather themselves and they will all run to Africa? Why can that happen? Are we not equals? Like, let me know what you think about that. Also, seeing their picture, it makes me sad. Where are the women? Women are more than half the population of Africa. And then you see the picture of the African leaders and you see mostly men. I know this is not just happening in Africa. It's happening in different continents as well. But it's about time we change that and show the actual face of the people of Africa. Half of us are women. And so women should be represented at the power level. Amen. So, but let me know what you guys think about all that. I know it's a lot to think about. We talked about Peter Obi at Chatham House. We talked about Cameroonian president not knowing where he is. We talked about the US-Africa summit. But before I forget, I just want to thank every one of you that commented on my last video where I talked about the hair care product line that we launched, where I talked about my own personal inspiration and story. Thank you so much. You guys were wishing us. Oh, you were wishing us when I almost cried. I said, ah, baba. Thank you to all my fathers and mothers that I have never even met. So thank you so much to everybody that ordered. We were like, what? People believed in us. They're ordering our product. Thank you so much for helping our market. Woo, father, father. God bless you. Thank you so much. Zion has been working so hard. She's been working daytime, nighttime, and part time. Bye. <laughs> so <laughs> I just want to beg of you guys to please and please be patient if you're yet to get your order it's on the way I believe at least 300 people got their orders over the weekend I really apologize but our website has been sending out an auto email immediately you put in an order you get an email that says your order has been shipped please disregard that you should also know it, it cannot be true we are trying to fix it your order cannot be shipped immediately you know we still need to like pack your order before we ship it so please and please disregard the first email that says your order has been shipped you actually get an email from the mailing company as soon as your order ships and uh, with tracking number and everything so please don't be upset if you got that first email We're, we've been working so hard to fix it so more importantly guys i'm so excited to tell you that lifecard international has launched prosper estate phase three 300 square meter is going for 5.5 million 500 square meters is going for 9 million and 600 square meter for 10.9 million please and please know that this current price is only valid until january 28 the developer Mental fee is 1.2 million naira. That is the money to do the fencing, putting up the gate, earth road to each plot, and access road to the estate, and so on and so forth. And also, documentation fee is 1 million naira. So, you do get a 10% discount if you make all your payments within three months and you tell them that you're coming from Adeola, and 5% discount if you pay in six months and above. They've released the activity plan and timeline so that you know exactly what to expect in the next 12 months. You know when the roads will be cleared you know when you get access you know when you get your deeds and survey and so on and so forth what you get is a sea of o and the land is dry land for those that may be wondering yes it is dry land now don't forget that this is located in oshoroko in the bejuleki and this is really close to the new airport that they are starting to construct this year it is first come first serve as usual the link to reserve your plot is going to be in the description below it's also on the screen please read everything on the form they have a section for q a because your questions might have already been answered so please read everything read the contract read everything before you sign and if you have any questions please email them or you can call the number on the screen and for those wondering where have i been don't worry i'm right here i'm back i'm fully back now we're going to enjoy each other this year and election is next month guys who are you voting for in nigeria all right y'all this video and i'm keeping it right up in here don't forget to follow me on facebook Twitter, and instagram and if you yet to subscribe to my channel i'm watching you on plasma tv press the subscribe button and the bell button until next time i'm gonna see you later peace out